Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com. I want to talk to you today a little bit about weather warfare, directed energy weapons, and the fires raging around the world. Now, I've seen a lot of people ask me to do a video about this. I don't think the people are seeing the big picture. And I really want to break down not only the history of weather control, but the modern technology used for directed energy weapons and what I believe has the biggest effect on these forest fires. Weather control, directed energy weapons, and fires rage worldwide. Now, everything you're about to see is open source, Creative Commons. You may copy this and paste it on your website as long as you do not sell it and you link back to the original. All I ask is that if you're going to support me, do it with a monthly donation on Patreon patreon or with a one-time donation on paypal so let's get right into this thing um we're going to do this lyndon johnson quote in just a moment but i found this article weather control as a cold war weapon december 5th 2011 by matt novak and it had a lot of interesting points in it but not a lot of pictures and not a lot of background so what I did was I broke it down, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. I suggest you go over to Smithsonian Magazine and see the original. Um, but right here, cloud seeding was invented in 1946 by Irving Langmuir, um, Bernard Vonnegut, and Vincent Schaefer. And basically he breathed into a you know, cloud box, it's a freezer, and you know cloud seeding was invented. And they all work for General Electric uh, Research Laboratory. And, you know, shortly thereafter, they did Project Cirrus and tried to steer a hurricane. That hurricane changed directions and uh, ran into Georgia, killing some people and doing millions of dollars worth of damage. Um, the article goes on to say in 1953, the President's Advisory Committee on Weather Control. This is when Eisenhower was in office. So I actually found a photo of that, and you can see it says from left to right, Kenneth Spengler, Joseph George, Lewis Douglas, A.M. Aberl, Howard T. Orville. We're definitely going to talk about him. And Luther Youngdahl, um, and that's the Advisory Committee on Weather Control. Well, you know, basically they, they were talking about how Russia was getting involved in weather control. And that might be a serious problem, but um, one of the inventors of cloud seeding, December 11, 1950, in the Charleston Daily Mail, um, ran an article quoting Dr. Irving Langmire. Now, this is new to me. I've never heard this quote before, and I think that you're going to find it fascinating, so I made an image out of it. Um, Rainmaking or weather control can be as powerful a war weapon as the atom bomb, a Nobel winning uh, physicist said today. Dr. Irving Langmire, pioneering pioneer in rainmaking, said the government should seize on the phenomena of weather control as it did on the atomic energy when Albert Einstein told the late President Roosevelt in 1939 of the potential power of an atom-splitting weapon. Quote, in the in the amount of energy liberated, the effect of 30 milligrams of silver iodide under optimum conditions equals that of an ato one atomic bomb. Think about that for a minute. 30 milligrams of silver iodide under optimum conditions equals that of an atomic bomb. Um, now that kind of goes against what all the meteorologists, all the scientists that I've talked to have said about cloud seeding. It's completely benign. It really doesn't matter. It's only tiny amounts. Well, according to the inventor, tiny amounts equal much power. Um, the article from Smithsonian goes on to talk about in 1953, Captain Howard T. Orville was chairman of the President's Advisory Committee on Weather Control, and he was quoted widely in American newspapers. He was also on the cover of Collier's 1928, uh, May 28th, 1954 magazine. Um, and if any of you guys have ever been to weathermodificationhistory.com, which you can see right here, 
um, you'll see that that's what we've used as our logo is from that magazine cover. Um, no small surprise there. So this is a weather made to order by Captain H.T. Orville. Ike's advisor reports man, man's progress in weather control. Um, and, you know, the story goes on from there. Uh, they talk about, uh, you know, uh, building a weather control headquarters. People call in. They say, oh, there's a tornado. We dispatch people. And then the... You know, indeed, if investigation of weather control receives the public support and funds for research, which in, in its important merits, we may event we may be able eventually to make weather almost to order. But you know, of course, the opposite is true. Um, the same technology that could be used for benevolent purposes will be used for war warfare, and it has been. It may be someday possible to cause torrents of rain over Russia by seeding clouds moving towards the Soviet Union. Or it may be possible, if an opposite effect is desired, to cause destructive droughts which dry up food crops by overseeding those same clouds. And fortunately for the United States, Russia could do little to retaliate because most weather moves from west to east. And uh, a couple articles here. Rain as a weapon thought possible by U.S. scientists. It mentions uh, Frank Carey um, in here. An Associated Press article by science reporter Frank Carey, which ran July 6, 1954, Minnesota's Brainerd Daily Dispatch. I don't have that version, but I've got four other versions by Mr. Carey. You can see right here, by Frank Carey. Rain is a weapon thought possible by U.S. scientists. Weather control might play part in future war. Weather control in Russia might be possible by U.S. Frank Carey. Cloud seeding may someday be useful, powerful weapon of war. Frank Carey. So this was all in 1954. These are also available on weathermodificationhistory.com. Simply click on newspapers and you will see that we have newspapers going all the way back to 1981. Shout out to Dominic Marama who uh, recreated these articles from various sources on the internet and turned them into single images for your browsing pleasure. Simply click on one and start your reading. Flip through, flip through, flip through. Um, and I, you know, I use these regularly when I'm trying to reference history. Dr. Edward Teller, father of the age bomb said, I would not be surprised if accomplished, um, more confident of getting to the moon than changing the weather, but the latter is a possibility. I would not be surprised if, if accomplished in five years or failed to do so in the next 50. He said that in 1958. Now, Edward Teller is also the individual from Lawrence Livermore National Lab who in 1994 started the big push for geoengineering that is going on today. Um, and uh, Captain Orville said, if an unfriendly nation solves the problem of weather control and gets into the position to control large-scale weather patterns before we can, the results could be more disastrous than nuclear warfare. That's a, tr that's a fact, just period, point blank. And it's plausibly deniable. Um, God did it, we didn't do it. Um, so that's a big problem. Uh, and then in uh, 1958, Captain Orville, again, you know, talking about problems uh, that a satellite could focus sunlight to melt the ice and frozen harbors thaw for thaw frosted crops or even scorch enemy cities quote behind the scenes while statesmen argue policies and engineers build space satellites other men are working night day and night the they are quiet men so little known to the public that the of that the magnitude of their job when you first hear of it staggers the imagination their object is to control the weather and change the face of the world some of these men are Americans, others are Russians. The first skirmishes of an undeclared Cold War between them already have been fought. Unless a peace is achieved and the, 
the war's end will determine whether Russia or the United States rules the Earth's thermometers, which goes right to the heart of geoengineering and uh, the climate change global warming debate going on today. Um, and you can see some more articles by uh, Captain Howard Orville here. Weather as a Weapon, page one and two from Popular Science. Each and every one of these you can open link in a new tab and see the full size version of it and read it yourself. Um, or just go over to Weather Modification History. A powerful, more menacing than the H-bomb. A powerful, a power more menacing than the H-bomb will be wielded by the First Nation who learns how to use weather as a weapon. Uh, it's pretty horrible stuff. Red's control of weather held threat. Russia pulling ahead of U.S. warns Senator. And then back to that Eisenhower, um, you know, committee, weather control research okayed. July 12th, 1958. Um, but of course, the U.S. National Research Council pushed back saying, we conclude the initiation of large-scale weather modification programs to be premature. Um, and that's the end of the Smithsonian Magazine um, story. But there's way more to the story. And now you are going to hear the rest of the story. So... Before Eisenhower left office, he uh, warned us of the military-industrial complex. And I think even he had a sense of what he had started when he okayed this weather modification research, when he you know, opened the, the floodgates, as it were. Um, and, and he definitely warned us of that. Please watch the video. Next up, we had President Kennedy and his United Nations address to, on weather modification. We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. September 25th, 1961. Read the article on weathermodificationhistory.com. Um, references are provided on each of these. Then came President Lyndon Johnson, who was also Vice President Lyndon Johnson when he said a couple of these, but the worst being. It lays the predicate and foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. You mean like the chemtrail problem we're seeing today? The clouds in the sky that everybody's complaining about? Determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately control the weather. He who controls the weather will control the world. And he said this at Southwest Texas State University in a commencement speech in 1962. Article backing that up. LBJ says it's time to change the weather. February 19th, 1966. And the worst quote of all. From space, the masters of infinity would have power to control the Earth's weather, to cause drought or f and flood, to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea, to divert the Gulf Stream and change temperate climates to frigid. Vice President Johnson comments at hearings uh, of the Senate Armed Services Committee 1957 link to weather modification history. Each and every one of these is well documented. You can come over here and you can see President Johnson approves weather warfare. Same two quotes I gave you. The actual commencement speech itself, you can watch it, and a whole bunch of references um, to articles about that. Same images available here. So that's what weather modification history is all about. It's a timeline um, that allows you to go through the entire history of weather modification. I suggest you do so because those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. All right, so back to the story. Um, that's a scary speech, and he's talking about space weather control and controlling terrestrial weather, you know, where we live from space um, or a space race. Well, that's very interesting. Um, Lyndon Johnson went on to okay weather modification and weather warfare over Vietnam. Henry Kissinger, the CIA, and Lyndon Johnson 
uh, basically use the U.S. Air Force and Navy to do weather modification over uh, Vietnam using silver iodide and lead iodide. Um, tell that to all the people who are getting paid for Agent Orange damage to their lungs. They were also sprayed with lead. But um, this lasted from March 20th, 1967 to 72. It was completely a secret until Jack Anderson, my hero reporter, um, found a note that said Laos operations continue as present plus Popeye to reduce trafficability along infiltration routes and authorization requested and implemented operation implement operational phase of weather modification process previously successfully tested in the eval and evaluated in some area u.s senate subcommittee on the oceans and in international environment um come over and look at the pop i think it'll blow your mind how many links we got on it uh, that's the actual C-130 with a JATO um, silver iodide rack. These are this is the U.S. Navy's cold cloud modification bomb. That's Jack Anderson. That's Senator Claiborne Pell. He had three hearings about this um, incident, and we've got many, 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 many articles. The CIA rainmaking over Laos uh, has only indifferent results. Rain making over trail tried by the CIA. That's the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Everybody's seen the videos of uh, the weather, you know, and people up to their knees in mud. Senator seeks NATO ban on weather wars. Ooh, so now they're talking about ban banning weather warfare. Senator Pell, um, you know, was the driver behind this, and it was because of Jack Anderson's uh, pioneering work originally in the Pentagon Papers and following up on that. And U.S. urges ban on weather manipulative warfare. U.S. Soviets propose ban on weather warfare. So they, oh, wait, now they agree that they should just ban it because it's getting kind of out of hand, right? Well, that comes next. The Environmental Modification Convention Weather Warfare Ban, 1977 and 1980. And you can see the paper here. Convention on the Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Use of Environmental Modification Techniques, October 3, 1978. And that's when the Environmental Modification Treaty was signed, um, also known as NMOD. Um, and the, the, bulk, the most important statement in this is, each party in this convention undertakes not to engage in military or other hostile use of environmental modification techniques having widespread, long-lasting, or severe effects as a means of destruction, damage, or injury to any state party. So they banned weather warfare, but they did not ban weather modification. It still allows for peaceful weather modification going forward. Jack Anderson once again breaking the news, the race for Star Wars weapons. The United States and Soviet Union are engaged in a deadly race to develop Star Wars weapons like laser beams and man-made lightning bolts. The top, the top secret plans call for mounting them aboard future spaceships. And he talks about charged particle beams and other things like that. Um, you know, this is, this is a serious, serious topic. Now... The colloquial term that everybody uses is directed energy weapons. He says it right here. Who's ahead? The assessment of the U.S. balance, uh, U.S. Soviet balance in laser and other directed energy weapons, is contain contained in a highly classified study last year by the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. It was shown to my associate. Overall, the U.S. and USSR high-energy laser programs are roughly equal at present time, 1981 Washington Post. This comes from the CIA's reading room, and it says declassified in part. This is a freaking article that appeared in a newspaper that apparently has been redacted and re-released declassified in part. So Jack Anderson, I wish I could find an original copy of this and read where, whatever they remove, but just what's in here is a pretty hot topic, to say the least. 
Next up, we have the Russian woodpecker Chernobyl meltdown and ionospheric heating over the United States, 1983 to 1986 um, video right here. Now, you can come to the link. It's on climateviewer.com. And you can basically see that, you know, at one point, the Russians had these ionospheric heaters. They were called the Duga-3 radars, also known as the woodpecker. Looks like that. And that, you know, they were basically accused of, you know, creating an El Nino and creating severe frost that killed people in the United States. And it was in popular communications that this image uh, appeared. ELF, is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Have the ha has a technique devised by Tesla permitted the Soviets to alter the world's weather? And down here it says 130, um, caused the deaths of 138 persons and damaged many millions of dollars of crops. Scary stuff indeed. Um, and as a result, if you did not know, um, the Russian woodpecker was only 5.9 miles away from the Chernobyl reactor because this was an ionospheric heater powered by the Chernobyl reactor. And of course, we blew that up. So that's not a coincidence. Um, and you can see the fallout there. So that's, that's an interesting uh, note that follows up right after what Jack Anderson said about Star Wars weapons. He was referring to ionospheric heaters as well. Um, and ELF are extremely low frequency waves and their ability to generate gravity waves or Lee waves in the sky and blocking patterns or ridiculously resilient ridges, um, things like that. But despite the fact that weather warfare was banned, it did not stop the U.S. military from discussing um, using carbon black for weather modification. And what you see here in these next four slides is, uh, let's blow this up some. Weather modification using carbon black. Let's go even bigger. Increased precipitation. Muddy dirt roads. These are all the th same things we did in, uh, in Vietnam. Decrease precipitation, dry out roads, fields, improve tractability, deny fresh water to troops in semi dry regions, to actually shut off water going to a country. We did it in C to the CIA. The CIA did it to Cuba in 1969 and was called Project Nile Blue. And then wait for it, increase cirrus cloud cover, chemtrails. Cover the sky in clouds, just like LBJ said. Let's control the cloud layer. Why do that? Why does the U.S. Air Force say they want to do this? Create clouds in the sky. Deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance. Decrease decrease light level for nighttime operations. So our night vision goggles are more effective. But what you'll quickly realize is. Even though this is a report from 1997 given at the uh, by the U.S. Air Force Phillips Laboratory at the Test Technology Symposium 97, a joint Army Air Force um, meeting, that back in 1958, Navy scientists creates clouds, breaks them up. You can see uh, Dr. Florence Van Stratton here, and they used ordinary carbon black dust or a, a, a byproduct, a part of soot, just regular soot. And it says we dropped carbon black suspended in a liquid over a track of a mile and produced a solid line of clouds one mile long. When the, we dropped a half pound pa dry packages of carbon black, we produced single clouds with each drop. The Navy then team seeded seven clouds with carbon and dust and dissipated each of them in two and a half to 20 minutes. Each cloud turned gray and then rapidly disappeared. Aside from the cost of the airplanes, we spent less than $5 on the experiments over Georgia. So this, this idea of using carbon black dust to do weather modifications is still not well known, except to my people, of course, 
Um, I've been talking about carbon black dust at length ad nauseum for five years now. And I believe this is the true secret behind the chemtrail conspiracy to create clouds is that planes spew carbon black dust every single day. And that's how clouds are made. So if the U.S. Air Force says they can decrease precipitation, if Dr. Irving Langmire and Captain Orville said we could overseed the sky um, to shut off rain, then why is anybody surprised that Iran accuses Israel of cloud theft, weather warfare, and the CIA Cuban rain embargo? Um, he said, joint teams from Israel and one other neighboring countries are making clouds entering into Iran barren. And that is exactly more than likely the truth. That is a complete possibility. If you go to this article, you can actually read the whole thing. I got a video at the top. Just click play. It'll you know replace the picture with a video. But regardless, um, I go through all of the different people who reference this article. Um, Ahmadinejad, you know, complaining about it way back when, but weather engineering in China to prevent rain over the Olympic Stadium, that rain could be flushed out before it reaches the stadium. Um, and then how we made the Chernobyl rains, use artillery shells filled with silver iodide to make clouds, rain clouds that would wash out radioactive particles drifting towards densely populated cities because they didn't want um, you know, the, the, the rainfall to reach Moscow. So the meltdown occurred here. They did weather modification here. Made all that rainfall here, and then the clouds are nice and dry before they got to Moscow. So how Russia stopped Chernobyl cloud. Um, methods to destroy developing convective clouds. Um, seeding of 30 kilograms or more of coarse dispersion powders like carbon black dust. Um, the Russian military also uses concrete uh, to prevent undesirable clouds and precipitation from reaching it. So read all about that. That article is on climateviewer.com as well. Um, but the, now we get into the you know the brass tags here. Harp in the sky heaters. I got a video on this. You know, how HARP really works, if you really want to understand that sort of thing. And Directed Energy Weapons 101. So, people are, are screaming that, you know, Directed Energy Weapons are behind all the fires. Now, I have no absolute proof that that is true. But what I can do is educate you very, very much on what Directed Energy Weapons are. And I just had an add-on to this article, which is going to blow your mind. Um, and it's right here scrolling down the directed energy professional society DEPS and I found uh, actually Dominic Marama found this PDF which he sent to me and it is fascinated 2018 directed energy educational outreach the United States leads the world in directed energy technology whoa and then you look at, I made these images from the PDF just a couple of minutes before making this video and uploaded them to the article, which I wrote a couple of days ago, or actually uh, the 5th of last month. And you can see who's all involved. Um, you know, just unbelievable. Booz Allen Hamilton, do I need to say any more? Boeing, General Atomics. L3, Raytheon, all the names you know, and, and many more. Sandia National Laboratories, U.S. Naval Research Lab. Okay, you see it. That's who's involved. National Scope of Directed Energy Weapons Technologies or Activities, 37 out of 50 states involved. And you can scroll in on this thing. It's pretty sharp, and you can see, you know, L3, Pulse Systems, Lawrence Livermore National Lab, um, and the list just goes on and on and on. It's pretty freaking nuts. Uh, Army, Yuma Proving Ground. I know there's a lot going on right in here. Um, Air Force Research Lab Directed Energy Directorate is right here. Um, Los Alamos Laboratory Tech Source. Um, they have a, a, an actual testing range where they shoot down... Uh, um, 
why don't we just go to the map and show everybody uh, we'll, we'll come right here I'm gonna go to climateviewer.org real quick and I'm gonna hit atmospheric in sensors and EMF sites and I'll hit directed energy and lasers and particle um, colliders and gravitational wave detectors and give this a moment to load up and we'll come over here and take a look see and right about oh goodness it's running slow we have a thunderstorm that just started coincidentally um, and right about here directed energy weapon test site North Oscura Peak at White Sands Missile Range New Mexico and this is where they test a lot of these um, directed energy weapons and they shoot down drones with them so yeah this is all real real as rain you, you can't deny any of this uh, let me reset my zoom over here but regardless um, that's some pretty fascinating stuff right there so 37 out of 50 states involved in directed energy weapon usage um, and then this is a very lengthy list of things like solar powered satellites how you can you know beam energy from space down to the ground the thunderstorm solar powered satellite by Bernard Eastland co-creator of um, Heart and a video that was a presentation at the weather modification I conference atmospheric heating as a research tool where he talks about that thunderstorm powered satellite so solar powered satellites are um you know basically they're they say that they're about energy but they are directed energy weapons in space and can easily be used for that purpose um so that's this article is pretty lengthy also check out trump's space force owning the weather in 2025 and the joint non-lethal weapons directorate with all of their laser beams and energy beams and things like that so back to the story we're over here let's close that all right so where were we? we jumped down too far all right so that's direct energy weapons 101 read the article it's very lengthy it'll get you up to snuff on all of the directed energy weapons and then we have this fox news admits government using lasers DEW before CA fire found the original link on this and they talk about the Athena um, weapon Athena laser weapon kills five outlaws for God's sakes don't play this because I don't want a copyright strike um, but anyway they have this woman who's overjoyed about talking about the Athena laser weapon system prototype from Lockheed Martin I do not want your cookies um, but regardless how it works shows them shooting down outlaw UAV just like I was showing you on the map burning holes in trucks all of this sort of thing shooting down drones that's what the, um, the you know little PDF I just showed you about was all about um, how we have really perfected the art of directed energy weapons and she's overjoyed about this and if you you know watch the video you can look through this and see a, a lot of uh there's a, a drone getting shot down unlimited ammo um you know, we've seen the melted cars we've seen the damage burning holes in boats just un unbelievable devastation um you know going on right now so check that video out it's pretty amazing um but we also have this dave hodges from the common sense show with deborah tavares june 22nd 2018 and she talks about something that i've mentioned several times earlier this year every time somebody asks me about california wildfires i tell them about hack and squirt so this is the first time I've heard somebody other than me uh, resonate that and made me very happy to hear her mention that. Um, and then she goes on to talk about directed energy weapons in the California fires. So check this out. It's a great interview. Um, it's about an hour long. I'm not going to play any of it. But regardless, let's do this hack and squirt thing. Round up to kill trees, create forest tender boxes. Hack and squirt is very simple method, said Jim. Not this gym. If a tree has a main stem, merely place cut marks around it and inject herbicide. However, how you make those cuts is important. So 
you can watch this video series that I've put together. Um, and it's, you know, basically about Hack and Squirt. And you can see that I have several different videos here. Hack and Squirt Forestry, Mendocino County, California. Um, and a couple other, The Tainted Forest. Hack and Squirt Injection Application. Let's take a hack and a hack at hack and squirt individual plant treatments and how to kill a tree hack and squirt. Um, so basically what's been going on in California is on large patches of land and you can see it right here in the video. Uh, you see this dead patch of gray trees and everything's green around it. Um, UN Agenda 21, 2030 and the California liberals and the government are, you know, totally in on this thing with the, the hack and squirt method um, of going out and doing forestry uh, control using this hack and squirt method. Well, what that ends up doing is it doesn't actually cut the tree down. It lets the tree die in place which basically turns large portions of forestry into tinder boxes. So the only thing you need after that is a lightning bolt or obviously a directed energy weapon would work just fine. And you can light massive forest fires because they've been using hack and squirt for quite some time and very few people are talking about it. But it's basically round up, sprayed into a tree Take a blade, whack, whack, whack around the base of the tree, spray it directly into the cuts that you've made and kill the tree in place. It is a horrible practice. The Lorax would be fit to be tied. And uh, I happen to consider myself the Lorax because I speak for the trees. So from the trees, from the trees and me to you, Quit hacking and squirting. You're burnt. You're causing these tinder boxes. Uh, you, it's a stupid idea. So raging uh, fires ra raging across California and worldwide. We'll go back to the map for that. And as you can see, I've got fires up here. Um, two different sources of fire maps um, currently up on the screen. Um, you just go to a live alerts, fire, smoke, and volcanic activity. And I have the NOAA HMS fire detection and smoke detection and the NC web incident information system, um, reports right here. This is just in the California area. Pretty crazy. Let me go to, um, actually let's change this. Excuse me for a second to here so we have some actual borders and everything people can see so these are the california fires there's the car fire and as you can see um it shows you know car fire wildfire information with a link to it and uh, where the fires are actually burning that's not the only big one there's a pretty big one down here this one is the mendocino complex wildfire uh, there's a there's a lot of wildfires going on right now all across the West Coast as we can see um, some of these bigger than others obviously and if we want to see that we come right here to live alerts go to NASA satellites visual corrected reflectance and then turn that bad boy on and you can actually come in and see the smoke from those fires let's go there and let's make this full screen for now. So we can actually scroll in and now we can see the smoke coming off of the fires. As long as I don't zoom in too far. And there's the, the fires coming, the smoke coming off of the car fire. Um, and several of these others. So pretty much where you see the fire markers, you can see streams of plumes of smoke coming off. Same time. That's the purpose of Climate Viewer 3D was to be able to see these and you can see the more smoke you see the worse the fire obviously which what is this one right here this is the Gilbert wildfire um, pretty crazy stuff so as we can see there's a lot of that going on and as a result there's a huge smoke plume here so the last thing I want to check whenever I'm looking at wildfires is air quality so I go to here 
uh, particulate matter 2.5 and we can see air quality reports and as you can see looking pretty good today because the smoke plume has changed directions it's only at 68 over here but over here and directly in the smoke plume 102 181 um, pretty bad out here red is bad purple is worse um, orange is bad so pretty bad air all through the smoke areas you can see that they all line up so this is all real-time information um, I have several different sources of this Ooh, there's another really bad one over here what is this this is the Ferguson fire um, people downwind of that are probably having a very tough time, time breathing and we have cloud formation all along the mountaintops um, so this is a serious problem these wildfires um, you know it's very interesting to think that you know that these are more than likely um, lit on purpose you know with when you've got the hack and squirt method being used when you've got individuals who have a agenda to clear out um, urban proper populations or you know not urban but um, people who don't live in big cities and get them into the big cities the mega cities that they're talking about this UN agenda 21 2030 stuff um, you know burning up the all, all of the the people who are living in uh, country land and uh, then re you know re you know put bringing them over to the freaking big cities it's you know it's all part of a technocrat plan you know that's been going on for quite some time so you can see all of that stuff on climateviewer.org that's on my flat map I also have a 3d map you can click right here to see that um, and see the current you know air quality reports from all over the US um, to go with it you know and track all of this in real time so I suggest you keep up with your fires this way uh, right now on the screen I have two sets of fire information um, the NASA satellites and air quality from two different sources um, US EPA and the World Air Monitoring um, System but you know I would have uh, this up, but none of these are working right now. The fire detection from MODIS, NASA firms, and I wanted to know why. And it says, due to large demand, the web service is temporarily disabled. So you guys can stop emailing me saying, hey, these map layers aren't working right now. Um, they've disabled them temporarily. So in order to see that, you're going to need to come over to the firm's website or fire information for resource management systems and go to their map. And you can see um, on you know all of that data still. Normally, this data is available on climateviewer.org, but temporarily they've disabled this. This is a fire monitoring from space from NASA's Terra and Aqua um, MODIS um, satellites but I, I do have a link to that in the article as well it's right here so you can come over and check out the NASA firm's website as, as well so the big picture is you know the climate changers the water and water wars technocracy geoengineering and replacing the water cycle and this is all about control so weather warfare geoengineering all the way back from the very first statements about controlling the earth's thermometer if you control the earth's thermometer you control the water cycle if you control cloud seeding you can control where water falls if water is not falling you create drought if you create drought you create tender boxes if you um, use hack and squirt you create tender boxes and when tender boxes are struck by lightning or directed energy weapons you create massive forest fires and for the for that I'm gonna end you know with a little bit of history that n nobody really knows but right here the very first entry on, on uh, weather modification history there was a guy in 1836 named James Pollard Espy and he was known as the Storm King and he said wouldn't it be a great idea to light 
forest fires all along the west coast because the smoke, ash, and soot coming from those fires would seed rainfall on the east coast. So there's one more piece of the puzzle that you may want to consider because weather modification history is fascinating and those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So I hope this has been highly educational for you on this whole shocking, um, you know, fire problem we've been having. Um, and, and know that since NMOD occurred in 1978 and weather warfare was banned, that they have not stopped. I've proved that with references and details all through this video. And that's why I have a solution called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. I hope that you guys will check it out and support it as well. Um, it's an act to end atmospheric experimentation without notification. So at least we'll know when they're cloud seeding, where they're doing it, when they're you know using lasers to steer lightning bolts, using lasers to create rain, or using lasers to light fires. And the only way this is going to happen is with people understanding the problem, the 10 technologies to own the weather today, and you can see the presentation and flip through it because like said, you know, all through this you know, presentation, USA and Russia are the major players, but China is now a major player as well. So we are in a weather war. Whether people want to admit it or not, whether they want to tell you to put your tinfoil hat on or not, and the only way to do um, anything about this is to catch them in the act and give NMOD some teeth. And that's exactly what I propose to do. So... Please share this um, video, this article. Um, it's very important that people understand the big picture. The article is Weather Control, Directed Energy Weapons, and Fires Rage Worldwide. Um, and I hope that you will continue to support me as well. You can give a monthly donation on Patreon or buy me um, you know, a tea. I like green tea. I'm also doing these immune teas. Um, but regardless, send a one-time donation on PayPal. I am also trying to go to the heart facility, to the, the open house. So if you guys would like to support that as well, um, send Jim Lee to the harp open house. It's at gofundme.com slash harp. Um, so any, any way you guys can support me, I'd greatly appreciate it. But I will continue to dig for the real details, all the facts, all the history, provide you with links, references, stuff that's credible, not, um, you know, fear porn filled with, you know, nothing to back these statements up. And that's what I do. So feel free to copy this article, put it on your website, just link back to the original and please continue to support my work because, you know, the people who are killing the planet have names and addresses and that's my specialty. And, uh, that's why I provide this information and with the information comes power. And I ask that you use that power to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always... Attack ideas, not people.